Hello. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Let it go. I think this one is better, right? Or the same? <laughs> yeah, okay. It's better. Good morning. Good morning. Let me open the Dev2 articles. So let's get us started. So as you can see on the screen, to, uh, today we're gonna just do a refresher of the state management, uh, how to use the, the hooks and uh, basic button pens. I will say that tomorrow is gonna be a heavy day because tomorrow uh, we'll need to uh, do the YouTube exercise. Uh, I may be able to start a little bit about so, uh, today, but because I reorganized the course, uh, most of the topics that you need to, to make the video site, by the video site, I mean this one. Let me open it. Uh, for this one, we need to do multi-page navigation. Uh, we are going to do the, the, the form events today, but the most important part of the course is uh, multi-page navigation. So I start installing the external components. Uh, so basically most, most of the topics that we need to do in this particular tutorial are, uh, are gonna, is the, the stuff that you need to read today. So I will probably uh, refrain to make this one. Maybe I will just make the homepage. So tomorrow we can start, we don't start from zero, but we are not gonna do the, the we don't start the, the entire development of this video site until tomorrow. That being said, that's not a defect. Uh, the reason that I changed the order of the contents is because I realized that the multi-page navigation was too complex for the students to learn on the second day. That's why I moved to the third day. So even if we are gonna, if we are gonna, even if we are going to start the the full video site one day later, I think it's for the best because it will allow us to learn the basics uh, in depth before we move to a full scale project. And um, Remember that we are gonna have uh, not only until this Thursday, but uh, during after the holidays, we're gonna have one more day of the uh, React. So that will complement it anyways. And um, plus uh, by just reading today in the afternoon about multi-page navigation and all the topics that we are mentioned here, you will be able to start uh, the project that we unlock tomorrow, Wednesday, without any issues. Uh, so far, the articles have been so good. So yeah, what I'm trying to say is we are going to start, start the full development of this particular site that you are seeing on the screen tomorrow. But uh, thanks to the articles, uh, I, I think that I can I feel comfortable that unlocking the, the case study tomorrow because as soon as we finish the development of the rate, the reactive, you will have the knowledge to make your own project. So yeah, I think that we are still on track. So, okay, let's get started. Uh, we are gonna do the, we're gonna do the, uh, explain the introduction to the React hooks. Uh, I hope that everybody is reading the article so we can go uh, faster than just focus on the details. In any case, I will create a new project. Let me just save this. Never do this, what I'm, saying, I'm doing right now. Always write nice commits. This is just because I'm on the rush. <laughs> but really, never do that, what I just did right now, because nobody will understand in six months what triple F means 
in a git commit. But in any case, let's create a project from scratch. Just give me one second. And while we start install the package, just let me go to lscd and desktop. Perfect, we are in desktop to clear the terminal, command K, remember. And remember, npx create React app, and we're gonna say hooks. And I see a comment. Uh, perfect. How was pronouncing front end? Oh, yes. Okay, while we install the hooks, uh, I think that we can use the three minutes that it takes to speak about the, the results of our yesterday. Uh, I'm happy that many students got an A. I think that it was an increased amount of students that got an A in relation to the last year. Uh, then, unfortunately, also I saw, I think I have, I need to check with my data from the last year, but uh, based on experience, I think that we got more projects failed this iteration than in the last one. Because if I, if I need to choose between a, enjoying failing people and making people learn, to be honest, I really prefer the second one. So in this case, I will allow people to resubmit the project uh, until the very end of the last day of the front-end module, because uh, it doesn't matter for me that uh, we have, uh, it, it doesn't bring any benefit for me to say, oh, oh I failed 10 students. I, I don't say that is the, the correct number right now, but for me, that's useless. For me, it's useful to say, uh, 10 students are useful in the group project than to say uh, 10 students fail the front end module. So I will allow to resubmit the projects to everybody, regardless of the, if they fail or they approve the project. Uh, uh, you will have access to the TAs all this week. Uh, and I will check later today uh, if we have at least one student with a grade of B or A in each group, so I can uh, ask a favor that these, these people don't need to actually help uh, their fellow students, but I will ask them as a favor if they can help a little, a little bit in case that the TAs are, are swamped. Uh, I check that the, the people that got a B or an A in this iteration are really, really good, and people that got a B was only people that only had a small visual defects, but that, that's something that, if, for example, if we, did, uh, if we did it like IP with a midpoint review, Everybody that got a B will have a, a hyper strong chance to get an A in the final review. So that's why I feel comfortable that if we got the people with B uh, during the, uh, at least a B in each group, we will able to help everybody in the, in the group. And remember, maybe you are really good in the front end, but in the next module in the back end, maybe you are not that good. So it will be really nice investment to help everybody else uh, and make a, and foster this community because uh, the next module is totally the opposite. Everybody that has a strong skills in the front end probably will struggle a bit in the back end. And everybody that is struggling in the front end probably has really strong skills in the back end because they are totally opposite skills. So as I said, uh, I will allow to uh, improve the project. That being said, on the other hand, React is a priority, so don't spend uh, four or five days in a row trying to fix the Copcat web page because the React project is the thing that we actually care about in this module. So just take a couple of hours each day, that's it. You have plenty of time to do that. And I remember that in the feedback, uh, I got a comment about uh, that uh, the, the, there was a conflicting hours between the TA, uh, TA hours and the optional lectures. Uh, that was not a mistake. That was done on purpose. You have to understand something. You have 38 students at the same time, and you have only two or three TAs per slot. If I put this, the TA slots in a different time frame than the optional lectures, then everybody will try to ask a question to the TAs, and then uh, not everybody will be able to get help. That's why there is a, even a queue system right now because uh, sometimes the the, the, the TS get uh, overwhelmed by all the many all the requests that we get at the same time. The optional lectures, as I always mention from the very beginning of the uh, the, pre, the kickoff of the module, are designed for people that are already into front end and want to spend more. Because as you can probably see, the morning lectures are super beginner friendly to the point that uh, last year I got, uh, and in the seven we got reviews that the, the, the module was too slow 
Yes, you, go, you, you hear that right. That you will go to a slow. Thus, I created the optional lectures for people that already has experience on the front end or they are good enough in the front end and, and really want to invest and become this as a career path. So the optional lectures are designed at the same time as the TA slots to help the people that are struggling with the module to instead of getting more information that instead of helping that will actually make you more confused, uh, will allow you to focus on the TAs out in the, with the TAs and the TAs on the other hand will not get many requests because half of the students are probably into the optional lectures. So the TAs will be free to help you more. So don't think about uh, the TAs and the optional lectures at the same time as a defect. In fact, uh, it was planned by me on purpose just so I can divide the group into some people going to a lecture with me and some people staying with the TAs so they can, uh, so the TAs can help you uh, more time instead of trying to just try to help you fast because there are so many people in, in the queue that uh, they will not be able to help you quite well. So again, the TAs hours and the lecture, optional lectures at the same time is not a bug, it's literally a feature that I did. So, and there is gonna be an optional lecture today. So if you got a good grade, well, you're welcome to join. And if you got a project that uh, failed, TAs will be available. You can use that time to focus on that. So, okay, let's go back to the project. It's installed. Yeah, it's installed. Uh, let me open it. It's in the desktop. It's called hooks because we are gonna use uh, React hooks. And uh, let's organize the project as I mentioned real quick. Um, I will delete just a test. I will, yeah, I will delete everything to be honest, <laughs> including the logo, but vitals and I'll only gonna keep a super minimal setup. And this will call GSX. Inside a GSX, I will leave, delete its elements. I will remove this export default. Remember that I always put it here. Uh, you can just save one line of code if you move the export default here. There you go. I will remove the image because we don't have the logo anymore. Uh, I want to delete the CSS from here. I will remove these vitals because we are not going to send data to Facebook in this occasion. Uh, let's test it out. And you can. Uh, no. I was about to even delete these two elements from the script package, but I think it's too much. So I will delete this one. Perfect, it's working. It's in black and white, but this is on by design. So uh, re, uh, re, remove files. So, okay, with this uh, clean project, and I will put it side by side, we are gonna check uh, what uh, we meant by the states in React. We are gonna combine the buttons, uh, the button events and the React hooks, or basically the state management at the very same time in this exercise. So let's do it. Uh, let me create, we're gonna use a, a single component here. We're gonna create a button. And this is a typical example that you will see in your React exercises that says increase counter, counter and basically decrease counter. And we are gonna showcase of course uh, a counter. So let's say H1 uh, react count uh, state exercise, the state exercise. Uh, in a P we're gonna say the current status of the counter. Status of the And we are gonna pass the variable counter. Uh, counter, this will crash. As soon as I write counter, it will crash. Why? Because counter is not defined. Uh, actually makes sense. And um, let's create this counter. So let's create counts counter equal zero as an initial value. And we're gonna create an event to increase the counter and decrease the counter. I will make it this one a, a variable so we can actually mutate it. And we're going to create a function to increase and decrease. Function increase and function decrease. I know that, by the way, I can optimize the code and use a single function and then just pass an argument as a positive or a negative. 
But right now, I'm not focusing on optimize my code. I'm focused on just showcase the, the stats, the, the, the hook state. So that's the one, the, the thing that I will actually focus on this particular moment. I will write these ones. I will start making comments. So properties, properties. So you can see how we organize our code. We put the properties on the top, our methods in the middle, and then the return function, that is the, the render, the thing that you see on the screen, always go in the bottom. So in this one, we will say counter, uh, plus plus, and this one is, or just to make it easy to visualize, counter equal counter plus one, and this one will be counter equal counter minus one. And we are also gonna do a console log to see the results. So I will say I uh, decreasing, decreasing, comma, counter to see the value, and the same here, but with the increasing. Perfect. We are gonna also create a console log just to see when my uh, my my component is being uh, created on the screen. So when I say and uh, uh, app gsx created. Perfect. So I have this uh, small setup. As you can see in Visual Studio Code, this uh, increase and this decrease function are uh, grayed out with the color. Uh, the color is a little bit uh, uh, semi-transparent or less or a, a bit opaque. Why? Because we haven't used it. So let's see how we do the, the, the bottom thingy. Because right now we are making uh, functions without arguments. In this particular case, it's super easy. We just need to do inside the button. We can add a property. In this case, it's called on click. And as soon as you can start writing, you can see in React the, 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 the property how is written with the uppercase, uh, lowercase and uppercase. And inside this property, I just can pass uh, the name of the variable, of uh, the function, sorry. There you go. Uh, sorry, uh, without the, without the, without the, the, the parentheses. If I put the parentheses, the, 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 the what we are telling, where we're telling React is, execute this button, uh, the, the, this function right away. And that's not what we want. We want that's that when we click on the button, the function decrease and the opposite here as well. So here, decrease. Uh, let me open the console so we can see the changes. I will put the console on the bottom. Perfect. Increase. Ah, yeah, uh, the console. Let me see if the console is clear. Let me reload the page. Clear filters. Perfect. So everything is working and this is the important part. Uh, we mentioned this something in JavaScript, but let's do it again here. If I put the function here and I reload the page, as soon as the, as soon as the component is created, we can see app gss created. We can put it actually component. Let me write it in a better English. Component app gss has been created or was created, was created. I reload the page. If I put the, the, the function with the parentheses, it will run because uh, each time that you open, each time that in React you open your curly braces, it means uh, run a code, JavaScript code here. Remember, this is the major difference between uh, HTML and GSX tags. It's, uh, they look 90% similar to the point that people will say HTML tag when they are not, but you cannot put JavaScript code inside HTML tags. Uh, there is a special tag called a script. Do I already saw, uh, saw that one to import these files? But, uh, and you can actually write uh, JavaScript inside these ones, those ones, but you can put a, inside these code braces, you can put a JavaScript code without any issues. And that's why it makes GSX so special that allows you to code. That being said, that's a, a double edged sword because that allows you to write really messy code and don't worry, uh, as soon as I unlock the project tomorrow, I will give you a, a nice template that I will allow you to organize your components in a nice way so they look a little bit better organized. Uh, but that tip number one is never, even if you can add logic here, like a, if a statement or something like that, never add logic here. Uh, create components and separate your stuff. Yesterday I showcased the, the component array that could have been easily be done here, for example, uh, Info JSON dot map uh, map and create code here that works, but please never do that. Create components for just uh, uh, components of variable for that information. Just a small tip. 
Uh, let's get back to the, our business. We know that this doesn't work, so we need to re uh, reload the page and it's working. And now I will increase my counter. You can see in the console log that the counter is working. You can see that, uh, oh, this one, the decrease is not working. Counter, counter minus, minus one, uh, decreasing is, oh no, it's actually working. I just was not scrolling the page, sorry, my bad. So yeah, increase until five, yep, one more. Perfect. And then decrease until zero, uh, zero. Perfect. So this part is working, but the, the million dollar question is why our supposed variable is not here. If I change the value and I reload the page, if I put, for example, 9999 and I save the page, you can see it. But if I press the, if I clear the terminal, um, increase the button, I can see that the number goes from the number that is on the screen and I keep increasing. But I don't see the change on the screen. Why? This is directly connected with multiple things in React. Number one. Oh, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, ask me a question. Uh, this you? I think it was you. Oh no! It's just saying um, the counter is not updating the states because exactly. you correct the first, but then you don't update the states. Exactly. And what is the state is the thing that I'm going to explain right away. In React, uh, the reason that React it has a, a super high performance in comparison to normal JavaScript is that, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, navigating the tree that we saw in the JavaScript, uh, the object done model, uh, I will not open my slides because that takes too much time, but I will probably say uh, JavaScript done and I get a nice picture on the web. Uh, yeah, something like this. Uh, yeah, navigating this tree. Uh, yeah, is, this is the object document model. Uh, different shapes, but same thing. So navigating this tree is incredibly slow. React, instead of uh, navigating each element of the tree, just literally delete the entire tree and copy paste. Literally, is the equivalent of just doing Control X for cutting and Control uh, V for pasting. So instead of navigating each element, it just delete everything and put everything again. It's way faster, way faster than doing uh, uh, block by block. But uh, to do that, React needs to know which variables needs to uh, uh, control, uh, needs to trigger this uh, destruction and re uh, re uh, reconstruction of the screen. And the way to keep track of that is by using the stake, as they, uh, Desio says. So, and what is a state? A state, unfortunately, is just a fancy word. I don't know why developers like to create a new words for stuff that can be just uh, expressed by simple terms, but a state is a fancy word for a variable that survive, uh, that survive this destruction and construction. And how it survives this construction and destruction? By literally being created outside my component, because we know that if we reload the page, my component is recreated. It means that it's destroyed, destroyed from memory and created again. So we need to create variables outside my component because we know that when we need to refresh the page, my component will be destroyed and then recreated. So let's do that. Let's create a variable outside our project. So if I were, were talking about Winsicle, let me use my Winsicle page, the one that I always use for my graphics. So if I have my fancy page, just let me create a graphic. Uh, we are in the CA platform. No, uh, we need to open to the weather measurement module. Mm, can you load faster? Thank you. Yeah. So we have our component called uh, app GSX. GSX. Inside my component GSX, I have a title. It's an HTML tag. Uh, H1, a title. I will put it in, in dots. So you can see that it's uh, different from, it's not a component, it's just a normal HTML tag. Well, GSA tag, but you know that it's quite close to the, to the HTML. Then I have button one, button one. is the button tag, but I, I call it button one to increase. Uh, I will say increase. I will say button. And then another button for decrease. And I have a finally a paragraph just to showcase the result. Uh, paragraph, paragraph, paragraph. 
of the result. There you go. All of these are normal tags, simple tags. So that's why I painted in this one, in this color. So, okay, this is my component. This is my component. Let me just read it literally my component, my component, my component. I will make it bigger. So, okay, we know that if we create the, the, the counter here, this is my data. If I create my, my variable counter, variable counter doesn't work from here because uh, the information doesn't update on the screen. And we need to, we need to tell the React, uh, destroy the component and show and create it again, but with a new value. So we need to create, somehow we need to separate this element and put it outside. So we need to, let's say that this is React, literally React. So we need to put it outside my component and tell the React to create this variable counter. And how we do that, how we separate this value from this uh, component, it's quite simple. Uh, we create something called the state. So let's create, uh, and I will not delete this counter, I will create uh, something different. I will create a state. And the state has a super weird syntax. Uh, why? And you will see in, in the optional lectures today that every other single framework has a much easier syntax to learn to control the state to the point that there is one framework called uh, called, uh, called Svelte, that basically every single property is, is a state. It's just easier to work with that. But React is weird. Uh, React is weird. Uh, you will need to become a master in functional programming, and you need to throw away every single concept of uh, object-oriented programming. There are two different paradigms. Uh, in programming foundations, programming in depth, we teach you how to become an object-oriented programmer. But the new trend is that in the future, uh, people were gonna move to functional programming. If you decide to do that, and something that I don't recommend yet, I recommend that in the, in during these next five years, learn both and combine the best techniques from both elements because no method, uh, no philosophy is better than the other one. They complement each other quite nicely. But uh, the point is that the React developers are functional programmers. And in, in that philosophy, uh, this creation of the state using this, this uh, syntax is quite logical for them. For them. Uh, uh, you just need to get used to that. But in any case, how do we create that? Simple, by creating an array. Yes, we're gonna have an array to call a getter and a setter. Uh, remember in Java, you have your classes and your classes uh, had getters and setters. But we are going to create a getter and a setter just so we can call this, uh, this React element uh, with this variable that is created here on React outside the, let me put just a little bit closer so we can zoom the components. And just let me throw a, a line to demonstrate that these two elements are totally separated from each other. So we need to create a getter and a setter to call this uh, variable that's created outside my component. That's what we're making. So let's do it. I say that first, 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 false. Even if if even if Visual Studio Code has autocomplete, I want to import my components, my elements first, so you can start seeing how to organize all packages. I want to use comments to make this stuff more organized. So I will say, first, I will import an npa package because npm package because React is installing my non in my non module, and if you don't believe me, you just go here. Go to, 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 to. These are my all my yes. That's why this selection takes like three minutes because there is installed a lot of folders. So one of these folders and the letter R are supposed to be from React. So let me go R R R R. R. There you see React. So this is your library React. So. Uh, I create my component. Uh, I create a, I will go and import a component from React. So I say npm packages and I will say import. And we're gonna import the user state, user state from React. There you go. So we're gonna use this, uh, this particular uh, library or proper, uh, yeah, library or module, sorry, module from, from React. And we're just gonna use it. We're gonna create a constant. The reason there is a constant in non variable is because we are not gonna um, uh, push elements into the array. One is created with two elements. We are not gonna mutate uh, my array. Uh, we are just gonna call the elements inside the, the, the array. That's why I use a constant. So I wanna say a state 
or my state, my state, just so we can say a fancy name. And then we're gonna say, set my state. The first element is the getter. Remember the getter, uh, the getter, I will say getter, get my information. I will put this one, this arrow quite big and I will put it in a different color, maybe yellow, yeah. So my first element is a getter. I will put it in parentheses in my state, my state. And the set of element is a setter. And the, it's the opposite. Let's create the arrow in the opposite direction. I will put this one here. There you go. And I will change the color from, let's say that this is green as a traffic light. And this is a red. No, no, sorry. This is a red. To be honest, I don't know why the, the colors mean nothing to be honest. <laughs> but anyways, set my state, my state, state. And I will make this one a little bit bigger because I see that you can barely read it. There you go. And this one will be bigger. There you go. So yeah, this will be my set of state. Uh, it's an array, and this will be uh, a initial. Uh, the initial value will call this particular uh, module or method. Method, yeah, because this is a method from React. And then I need to pass the initial value. So this is how I initialize my value. I will initialize with zero as well. Perfect. And now we're gonna modify our code instead of using the uh, uh, instead of showing the counter. Or we can show actually both. This is uh, this is a counter. We're gonna showcase uh, also my state. I copy this value and paste it here. And I will showcase a small. Mm, mm, let me see what symbol I can use for uh, for a bullet. I, I can use this element so we can this vertical pipe uh, so we can see the change on the screen. So uh, we can see the counter is zero. This is the counter and this is a state. A state, a state. There you go, a state and counter. We are just gonna show, showcase these two. And this, uh, I'm showing both my counter and my state. I will put both in zero. So there is no confusion about the values. They both start at zero. And now you can see that this one is, uh, is, uh, is, is brighter than this one because we haven't used this one. So let's use it. Now, when we press the button, I want to increase the increase not only my counter, but also my state. So how do we do that? Quite easily. We are gonna say, instead of saying my state, my state equals, I don't know, uh, my state plus one. This is not supposed to work. Uh, let's try it out, increase counter. <laughs> First of all, it's crashing because, uh, because we use a constant, uh, it didn't allow me to, to change the value. So that's, that's why it's so important to, to put the constants as a defense mechanism to avoid mistakes. Number two, let's see if it works. It doesn't work because that's not how it's supposed to, to, this is not how it's supposed to modify your your state. So let's fix this, put back, back in. And this is the cool part about Visual Studio Code. If you use this IntelliJ, uh, my plugin is called uh, Darkula IntelliJ Team. Uh, when I can see my variables in a, in a deep purple, my constants in purple, and my properties in my normal variables in, in, in white. It's light blue, but let's call it white. In any case, let's focus on fix this one. So how do I modify my state? Remember that this is a getter function. So to do that, I say set my state. And I can put a value here because it's a function. So I will say, uh, you didn't see that. <laughs> so my state plus one. And to decrease, exactly the opposite. Set my state my state minus one. Right now, we don't care about coding uh, a break, so we cannot go below zero. That's something that you can do easily. You know how to do that by pure logic in an if statement. And uh, let's try it out. If I increase my counter, I can see it here. And if I decrease my counter, I can see it here. 
You can see that I closed my console on purpose. Now I will open my console just to see, more showcase something important. So I will go to the console. And each time I increase the counter, notice this. Component G uh, app GS uh, sex was created. What is happening? Each time that I uh, change the state, React, instead of modifying the component tree but one by one, it just literally uh, deletes the deletes the, the component and put a, a inside this a, inside this part instead of starting in zero like it says right now it will start at the value that it was created so let's say that we start at zero i will put my uh, my state my state here my state equals zero i will put it in super giant so we can see it here i will put it here because this is where my value is actually created the first time the first time I create a component, I say react, hey, create a variable with a state of zero. Each time that I press the button increase and I send the I send the new value from here. Let me put the number one. Each time I increase the value, we go from zero and I press the button increase and I send the information via the getter. React modify this value. Now it's one. destroys the component, literally destroys the component. It creates again, boom. But instead of starting at zero, it will call the getter. The getter says one. So the initial value when it's created for a second time will be one. So that's how React is working behind the scenes. You send a getter, React destroys your component, it creates again, but instead of using the initial value, the second time that I create the component, it calls the getter to get the value that is right, is, is right now, is stored in this case one, and it, it showcases the value. When we delete the screen, we, we, when we create, uh, press the button for a second time, same process. We update the value, let me put it in bold. We send it using the getter function, there you go, this setter function. We put it here, so I delete this value. React destroys my component entirely. It creates again, but in this moment, instead of uh, using zero or one, it calls the getter, remember the getter, and basically put this value here. And you know that this value right now is two, thus the second time is two, and then so on and so forth, blah, 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 blah. blah. And if you have components inside here, I mean components, you know, the, re the real React components, the, the blue ones. If I put a component, uh, I cannot see a, a shape. There you go. If you have some components, they will be destroyed as well. And if they call the state, they will get uh, their own setters and getters and so on and so forth. And this process repeats over and over and over again. Before I move to the, uh, to the next topic, any questions so far? I will stop sharing the screen so I can see your faces. <laughs> no questions? Then I, I will move to a more complex example. Uh, let's, you cannot minimize the zoom. Okay, because I'm recording the meeting. Okay, so let me share the screen again. Oh, just give me one second. Let me see if I can hear you because probably, no, saying a speaker, yeah. No, yes, I, I can hear you. It's just, you're just quiet. <laughs> Okay, so let's move on. And now let's build a more complex example. I can delete my previous variable called counter because we, don't, we, we now understand why it doesn't work in, uh, at all. So I will delete it. Counter is crashing because counter is not defined. Counter is called here. So, okay, I will delete that here. And it's still crashing because here is not defined and here is not defined and here is not defined, and here is not defined. Very cool. Perfect. So this is a small example, a small example. I will create a branch just to modify my code base. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. No, I don't need to create a branch. Uh, you just can see the recordings. I will modify this code so we can actually send uh, new, uh, new values here. So 
let's say let's say that we increase the counter by five and by minus five here. So let's refactor this. And for now, I will keep this ones. And then I will create a third function set uh, modify value. And I will say new value, new value. So we're gonna be able to pass arguments now. And instead of modifying the state by minus one or plus one, I will just gonna pass the value from here. So they will say, set my state, my new value, new value, hey, my new value, what happens? Now, these are, this is a function that receives an argument. So how do we fix this one? This will stay here. So this will be a buttons without arguments. I will put an horizontal line and HR, sorry, uh, HR. I actually can put a nice H, oh, sorry, <laughs> and H2, uh, H2. And I will put the same comment here, buttons without argument. So I don't need the comment. I can actually use the real HTML tag. And this will be buttons with our button singular with argument, with arguments. It can be a singular puller. Uh, so in any case, I will create a new button and this will be a change value, increase value, increase value. And this will be buttons. I will create one for increasing and one for decreasing, decrease value, decrease value. I will close these ones. Uh, ah, this warning is because uh, I, I haven't used this function yet, and this is grayed out, as you can see. It's lower, it has, has an opaque, uh, opaque color in comparison to these ones. So, okay, let's create a fun, create, create functions with arguments. So, on click. And um, how do we do that? If we remember, if I try to say modify value and say five, uh, React is complaining. Uh, we need to do something else. We need to uh, use an arrow function. And yesterday I showed uh, in the, in the required material was the arrow function. The arrow function allowed me to create a function that will be click, uh, will be created only when it's the button is clicked. And how we do that? We create a empty parenthesis. We draw our equal and uh, greater than to literally draw an arrow on the screen. And here, I can just literally call this my function modify value, modify value, and pass a value. In this case, five positive. And I copy the value here. Well, I will write it from scratch so you can see it once again. Let's do it again. On click, I open my curly braces to write code inside React, and I draw my arrow function. So parentheses. I draw my equal greater than symbol to draw a literally an arrow from the screen. That's why it's called an arrow function because you are drawing a, an arrow using symbols. And then I call this function again, modify value. And I will say minus three, for example, there you go. And each time I press this one, they will increase by one. And I, each time I press this one, uh, modify value. And the reason that it doesn't increase is that I don't say my value plus five, I'm saying literally, uh, set it to five and set it minus three. So this is actually working. Perfect. So if you want to actually uh, increase the value based on this value, we're going to say simple, my current value plus my new value. So with this fix, if everything goes well, yeah, now we are actually increasing by five or my minus three. So perfect. This is how you create your buttons with, without argument. And this is how you create your button with arguments. Now let's create a new exercise. Uh, I will create a new one. So you can actually come, uh, keep this one. I create a new branch. So this was buttons. Now let's move to form events. So let me create a new branch. I'm gonna say form. And this is the basics of forms. We're gonna delete everything on the screen, everything. Perfect, I will delete everything here as well. I will delete this one. Perfect. Then I will gonna use the state anyways. 
So, okay, we're gonna create a small example with uh, the typical email and password form. To do this, we are gonna say straight ahead that we're gonna need two states, one to control the email field and one to control the password field. So let's start by doing that. We know that we need the state. Now we understand why we need the state. So we are not gonna waste the time creating the properties and then say, oh, it doesn't work. We're gonna, we know that it doesn't work. So we're gonna go directly with the state. One for the email, email, set email, equal user state. And by the way, remember in the state, you can pass a uh, numbers, booleans, or, uh, yes, arrays. Uh, you can pass any data type, but my personal recommendation is stick to numbers, booleans, and a string. If you need to pass objects, uh, objects, and uh, objects and arrays, or even functions or even classes or uh, any more complicated elements, it's gonna be harder to debug your code when you when when some for some reason your your state doesn't update. It's super hard to debug why. So please try to stick to basic data types. Most of the time, when you need an array, uh, you can stop uh, sit down, think for a while, and then you realize that you can probably do the same without using a complex data type. So keep it as simple as possible. So in any case, we start with uh, with an empty value. And we're gonna do the same with the password. Password, set password, password. Uh, use a state and the same, empty values. And here we're gonna create a simple form. So let's say a simple form, simple form. And we're gonna create a form. Let's use our form tag. And we're gonna create uh, two fields, uh, one for the one for the email and one for the from the for the password. So let's create a label. I will be label uh, email, and inside here we're gonna say input input uh, type uh, email. Why is, why I do that? because on mobile devices, this will open a keyboard with the button for the add sign. Remember the add sign for the email field. Uh, there you go. So this is super important. Even if you don't see the, the change on desktop at all, remember that we are mobile first. So we do that. And as a placeholder, placeholder is my field that says, for example, uh, the, the great, the, this, the example of how you want the user to fill the data. Perfect. And this is the important part. How do I connect this input field with my state? The answer is simple. We say value equal my state. In this case, email. And to test it out, we can say, for example, one, two, three. And you can see that the value is here. Perfect. But you saw notice something funny. Each time I try to, I'm pressing the keyboard. I am not joking. I'm pressing the keyboard looked like my keyboard is not working. My keyboard is working because I can switch between screens without any issue at all. Let's see what is happening behind the scenes. If I am correct, let me just showcase the screen, just one second. Console. Uh, you're probably the value. Uh, first of all, the machine is telling me about the unchanging event. We are gonna see that in a second, don't worry. And then the second one, it says that, that the, these elements are created but are not used. We know that, and we're gonna use them in a while. So in any case, I will create this one on a field, and it doesn't allow me to create anything. The thing is, each time that I'm trying to change the value, React is blocking me, and it's automatically overriding this value, email. So I need to tell React somehow, hey, I really need to modify the value. Let me do that. And how do we do that? We're gonna do the on change event. For now, I will delete these fields, not because I don't care about these fields. I really care about the fields and you should put this in your project. The only reason I'm gonna delete it right now is so I can fit more text on the screen. So my input will be email, but we need to modify, we need to modify uh, the, the email field based on uh, using the React hook. Remember the React hook, the user state hook. Each time that I press on the keyboard and how do I do that? Simple, on my on change event, on change, 
this is a new event on change. I need to modify this. And here I can do an arrow function. I can call a function. Remember, I can create a function here. But in this case, because we don't want to validate the data, we don't want to modify anything special. We don't want, we want to keep it simple. In this case, I will do something dirty and I will literally just call the state directly here. So I can say set email, uh, event.value. I think it was event.value, event and event.value, event target target dot value if it doesn't work like this i will check around in the in the articles and don't worry about that so yep looks like i can i can modify the information but how do we confirm that is actually modified quite simple let's do a small trick here and call it here in the email uh, email field sorry upside here we can debug and say h2 say debug or slash debug test Test email field, email hook, email state, and let's say email. So we can see that each time that I modify the value is modified here as well. And this is the magic of a state management. This is the cool part. Remember that each time that remember that each time that I was modifying in pure in the to do list in JavaScript, each time that I was modifying a value, I needed to say append child or update or push something on the array, and that was super annoying. And at one point, our title array got out of sync because uh, in the adding function we were adding the uh, we were pushing into the titles array and pushing into the the items array. But on the remove function, I only had one the code for the remove elements in the array. I didn't have the, the, the code for remove the titles. So that means that each time that I wanted to modify a value, I needed to explicitly tell update the value here, update the value here. But here I can I can showcase my the, the, the current status of the uh, email variable in any part of the code. So for example, I can create a footer and also say email equals email. And uh, you can see that the information is also modified here. Let me just put a small line here. So welcome to benefit number two of, uh, of uh, having a front end framework. Remember yesterday benefit number one was modularity. So we can split our component or web page into small blocks. Uh, if you did your refactor of the Copcat website, you, will, you could see how small your web page went from 100 to 300 lines of code to no more than 56. I can probably guess that that was the amount of lines of code you had. Benefit number two is that our information is in sync. So as soon as we modify our valuable, our valuable email here, each element that is subscribed, I mean by mean subscribe is that they are calling this variable, this getter, remember this getter, they, they get the value in real time and we don't need to do anything more. It's all in autopilot and it's amazing. I can delete this one because we know that it's working. I will keep this one uh, to the box and I will gonna do the same with the, with the, with the password field. And I will copy this one and I say the same one, the bug test password. I just say password. And this will be password. And because you can see that it says the book text state, email state, and I see an empty, I don't know if it's broken or not. This is a small tip that I like to do in, when I'm debugging. I just like to put three at signs, no, sorry, two at signs here and here. Those are normal HTML tags. And I know that this is empty on purpose. It's not that, it's not, it's not that I forgot to add the, the, the state, it's that literally the state is empty. So for example, if I press here on the keyboard, then you can see inside my, my two add signs, I see something. So I know that it's not that my password is broken, it's that it's my two variables right now are empty. And if you press a space, you can see that increases. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, can you explain what is uh, event.target.value? Okay, great question, great question. Thank you so much. Uh, remember that uh, behind the scenes, 
uh, react when I create this event, for example, on click and so on and so forth. Behind the scenes, React is creating this for you. I will create some, uh, by the way, I will write some code that probably gonna crash the screen on the left. Don't care about that, it's an example. What we are doing right now is create, say, saying, yeah, it's saying literally this. First of all, remember that we needed to add an ID. So let's say an ID, for example, my email field. field. This is what React is creating behind the scenes. Without needing to create this, React is making cons input field equal document get element by ID my email field line number code it's broken it's on purpose it's okay line number two is creating input add event listener then it's saying open parenthesis event this case is change event and then it's passing a function. Remember that we need to pass a function here. So we're gonna create a function, for example, modify my field, modify my email, my email field. Now we need to create a function, function, modify my event field. And if you remember my JavaScript classes, I told you that uh, each time that you call a function here, uh, based on this event listener, I will get a, a, a JavaScript automatically will pass me an event. So even if I even if I don't, I am not doing the arrow function here, something like this, uh, event equal event. Even if I am not doing the arrow function, uh, JavaScript will each time I call an event listener, uh, JavaScript will always send me an event as an argument. So even if I don't write it, even if I don't write, I don't pass the argument here, it will always always pass me an argument when I use the event listener. And in the event listener, I'm saying uh, console lock, something like that, console lock, uh, event, uh, event is the event, this is the event listener. This event is this event listener. And they will, the target, what is target? Target is the tag that is being triggered in the event. So this one is provoking the change. This one is provoking the change. So this is the target. And then value is literally this value. So you can see the whole React is so efficient. React is making me avoid this line of code, this line of code, and this line of code. And I can make everything with just this line of code. So you can see how React can help you make much better code. So all of this can be done with just this. So I didn't list it as a one benefit, but that, this can be mentioned as a fourth bonus benefit. Don't worry, this is not gonna be on the, in, the, in the quiz. So secret benefit number four, React allows us to create, to write less code because look at this mess just to make something as simple as getting the value from the input field. So did that answer the question? Yes, thank you. No worries, but it was a beautiful question. Thank you so much because I, I, I was struggling to know, to, to see if I added this, this information in the article yesterday, but I, I, I wanted to strike a balance between make the article short or useful. So this is secondary information that you don't need to know that is what is happening behind the scenes. But thank you so much for asking because I really wanted to explain it. But in any case, we are three minutes before the 10 o'clock. So I will take a couple of questions or uh, anything. And then we, at 10 o'clock, we move to a uh, 15 minutes break. So I will allow to take uh, questions until three minutes. And if you don't have questions, you will stay here on purpose three minutes. So as a punishment for not making questions. So go ahead. Okay, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, for the email field or, or the password even, uh, it's very common that there is a, like a validation behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, is that still possible to do even if you have the hook and everything? Of course. In, let me share the screen. You, good question. I probably need to do that definitely on a, after the break. But let's say that uh, 
function. Uh, let, let's do the typical example of the password. Let me just do it here. I will copy this one with the password field. There you go, password. Uh, I will do it as a break because I, I need to do the, the in the form. I will not put the validation in the input because I will allow to write to, to the user anything. For example, let's say in the email field, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to validate if they're using a, a, weird, a weird character, but I own, before I press the submit button, I want to check if the password, the typical, the password field is less than six characters. If we do that, it's simple. It's just a function. Let's say this is send email. This will be the one connected to the form. You can just ask for if password.len is less than six alert, uh, your password is too short. So yeah, you can do that without any problems at all. But I will not put the validation here. I will put it in the form, in the in the send email because otherwise maybe it's too annoying that as soon as you're typing something and you you get out of the field, it will say, "Hey, your password is too short." Hey, I'm just typing, man. Like, give me a break. So it will be too annoying. I will put it on the send form. But if you want to be super cautious. Maybe, maybe, just maybe in the email field, you actually want to avoid having these weird characters. For example, this one are not valid characters. So maybe you can want to, want to create a regex for that to avoid that. But if you want to create an email field super complex as that one, there is a React library called Thormic that will allow you to do that just easily. So you don't need to write your validation code. But you will see that one in the, in today's articles where there is a, a special section called related articles where I see, a, I, I showcase a couple of React plugins or libraries, whatever you want to call them, that will allow you to do that. So yes, the answer is yes, you can do that. And I will do this example in the, after the break. So right now, break, we see you in 15. So we, Hello, we're back. Sorry for the delay. Uh, I was answering one email from KTH. So let's get started. I know that I answered a couple of students in the in the Slack, and I know that I see some uh, Slack messages still being pending. I will check them after the lecture. So okay, let's get started. We were uh, finishing about our uh, small form demo. Uh, let's see that we have a small bug. Can somebody tell me what is the book, the bug that we have right now and how to fix it? First, what is the bug that we first, Yeah, first go ahead. Fields go ahead. Are updating. Sorry, can uh, you go again? Fields are, both fields are updating. You mean that the password field is updated? No, yeah, so they're both email and passwords updating um, okay, when you're and typing. What, and what is the solution? Uh, yeah, you just need to change the value um, on the password. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. So yeah, you can see up here. Uh, why this one doesn't work? Why this one doesn't work? The password field now. I'm trying to write something, but nothing, nothing happens. Why it doesn't work? Can somebody tell me? Wow, silence. Okay, I will tell you it's, why. Uh, you're, you're, you're sitting, yeah. Oh, until you put it in the chat. You've got to set email. Ah, it's in the chat. Sorry, I, I thought that Asis was taking care of that. Yeah, set password. Uh, correct, that's the solution. But let me explain why it's not working. As, as you can see, each time I press a, a, key on the, uh, a key on the keyboard, I hope that you can see the keyboard clear enough. The the email field changes, but I cannot add more content because the password is resetting. So this one is creating a conflict. Each time that I try to set the email, it changes the first, the first key, but then automatically the value, the, the value kicks in, the value is zero. So they reset each other. So they, they basically are contradicting this other, the, the getter here and the setter are fighting each other because they're from different fields. So the solution, Quite simple, essentially you set. Let's put set password here and I'll test it out. One, two, three, works, and the password works. Hey, this is super dangerous. 
we definitely need to fix this. This is, this is, this is super easy to fix. Here, type password. Let's reload the page. And now our password field is protected. Of course, I can see the password here and we should never do this outside of the bug, but we can see that our input is protected. And now that we actually have this one, let's do the same for the email, type email, email. So just when you see it on your mobile device, you will be able to see the, the, key, the correct keyboard with the act sign. And if you add number, blah, 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 it's the same. In any case, so far, so good. I will remove this box because number one, security issues. Number two, because we know that everything is working perfectly. So we don't need to debug it anymore. But remember this nice trick, add, add at the each end of the, of the state. So we can know when it's empty on purpose and when it's actually not working. So let's delete this one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I have some other question as well. In the article, uh, the last one, form events in React, mm -hmm. uh, uh, for some reason, you, um, the unsubscribe uh, was written inside the form. Yeah, uh, I didn't understand if there's a, what was the reason for that. Like, shouldn't it be in the e input or? Yeah, let's let's do that approach. Got a bit confused by that. Sorry. Yeah, no worries. Let me let me do it in the input, and then you will see why. So in a form, the correct input field is called a uh, input type uh, type submit and the value is uh, send email send email in this case says email so okay let me just put these values in in the, in the default state so so let's say my email is eduardo at kthse just let me add a little uh, is this element there you go and this one as well yes this is a graphic design my password is one, two, three, four, five. And then I will send an email. Uh, let me open the console just to see the changes. Just give me one second. Let me just clear the, oh, there's so many warnings. Oh, we're gonna check it later. When I press the submit, uh, not now, but this is there is a small problem. Uh, can you see this? Uh, can you see this uh, web navigation bar? The page has been reloaded. Um, this is important. Uh, let me just uh, create the, the email. Let me put something like this, Eduardo. Um, so, uh, I need the password. Nice. Okay. I will send the email. Uh, this needs to be an email field. So you can see that we have some validations uh, thanks to the browser. This is thanks to the email field. If I remove this one, uh, it will not care about the email field and it will allow me to send the email. So uh, safe password. I don't care. Okay. But you can see that this one allows me to send it uh, without being a uh, uh, type email. So this is why it's so important to type email. But in any case, we said that each time that React reloads the page, uh, the state is going to be protected. But we notice something. Here, each time that I press submit, save password, my fields disappear. What happened, Eduardo? You didn't say that each time, the comp and, and you can see that the component is created. You didn't say that each time that I create a state variable, it will be protected from this uh, creation and destruction. Let me just de delete this button so I can uh, delete it like this. Doesn't this contradict what you just said, Eduardo? You promised us that each time that we're gonna update the state, we are gonna be, be protected because we got the, the, got the server and the server, blah, blah, blah. But this behavior is contradicting everything that we just thought. We said that we are creating the state to protect the information from the from the reload of the from the from the creation of the destruction. So what is happening? The 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 the, the hint is in this uh, address bar that you can see that each time I modify something here. I need an email field. Sorry. I will delete this in type email because it's, to be honest, it's really annoying. I don't need to validate it right now. The point being is that I will delete the password because it's asking me to, to save my stuff and I don't care about that right away. You can see that each time I, I press the button, my web page is reloaded. And this is a huge problem. What is happening? In the old ways, in the old ways, in the old ways, sorry, the old days, 
uh, before we have uh, frogend frameworks or we have a, a powerful JavaScript enough to do uh, events, uh, powerful events like Ajax calls, we needed to send the information to another web page and we will not be able to, and we, will not, and we were not able to see the results. So in the old ways, we needed to reload the page to force the information to be loaded again from the server. So we don't not, we don't need that anymore because we now have powerful stuff like the fudge function and so on and so forth. So this is a this behavior of reloading the page is a legacy from the old browsers. So we need to tell the browser, hey, we are not old school anymore. We don't need to reload the page to showcase the new information. We have states in React, we have Ajax, we have the fetch function, we have a multi-sync, but we have thousands of technologies that we're gonna see today in optional technologies, by the way. So we don't need to reload the page. So we need to do that. And how we do that? Simple. Who reloads the page? The form reloads the page. And because the form reloads the page, then I will need to tell the form, hey, don't reload the page. And how we do that? Let's create a function. Let me do that again, the, the submit, the submit. And this time I will say on, I think it was on submit, on submit, let me just see. I don't remember which was the, 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 the event trigger. I think it was on submit, right? Yes. On submit, yeah. In any case, I can just Google around, it's okay. On submit, yeah, on submit. And I will call a function. Uh, I will say my function is send a create account because this is what we're creating, create account, account. I don't need to make an arrow function because as I mentioned before, uh, these event listeners always pass me the event automatically. So I don't need to make an arrow function to pass the event. The event will be passed regardless. So let me delete this function because this is not a function that we want to do. We're gonna say function, create account. And we know that this pass an event, so we, I need to put it in as an argument. And I will say console log uh, event to just see what is passing around. So perfect, it's working. And remember that I removed the validation of the email. So just, I honestly don't care right now. Uh, I, will click, I will clear the console with command K and we'll send an email and it's a little too fast. So, I need to literally uh, do the, the event the prevent default. So right now I will say event dot prevent default. I think it was like this. If in bucket, uh, in, okay, yes. You can see the, if you can see the if you can see documentation of in Visual Studio Code, it means that you write it correctly. If, for example, if I, I remove the T and I pass the mouse, it says any. It's anything in any is like anything, but basically what uh, Visual Studio Code is, is, hey dude, I don't understand with this function, but I will allow you to pass it anyways. But if I put T, it actually becomes the A. <laughs> it actually becomes the, <laughs> and now let me look bad. Prevent default. Now I can see the real documentation. If, if invoke it when the cancelable attributes value is true, it will execute the listener for the band with blah, 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 blah. So basically what it's trying to say is that to cancel the reload of the page. Now that the page is canceled, I can do my console log event. Let's test it out and send email. And now the page doesn't reload. As, as you can see that I send the email, but my fields are not, I not, are not, uh, are not destroyed. In fact, uh, sorry, are, are not uh, deleted. If I press send email again, it's working. Perfect. It's working correctly. So now I can say that email, uh, I, can call, I can call my database from here without reloading the page. That's why we connect the form because we need to, we need to prevent this uh, old behavior. And this is a legacy for older browsers. And if you say, hey, Eduardo, if this is so old, why modern browsers doesn't just remove it? It's because that will break the internet because there is so many pages that has this line of code working right now. So if you remove the, the event default, if you remove this event to happening, uh, in a, if, let's say that you, you, you code a new browser that doesn't need this at all. So you remove this line of code. As soon as, soon as the old web pages are run and reach this line, the, the browser will crash because it will say uh, prevent default is undefined because we, 
make our, our browsers modern and we delete this line of code because we don't need it anymore because we are super smart. We are actually breaking the entire internet. So that's why this is gonna be a state basically maybe forever. So, and you need to be aware of, and this is how you fix it. In any case, we fix the form and we're gonna do the validation that we said. Okay, let's validate the, for example, if, if password dot len dot len is less than six, alert, uh, alert, your password is too short. Else, alert, alert, uh, for example, welcome aboard. You can make a validation as well for the, for the email field and so on and so forth. But so far, let's do that. Send email, your password is too short. I will answer your question in one second, Nicholas. I just want to check that this works. I will put 10 characters, send an email and work on a board. Perfect. So yeah, go ahead, Nicholas. I just wanted to ask, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we do a validation on the front end and the back end. Um, yes. If you've got good validation on the front end, do you still need the same validation on the back end? Like, for example, the password length. So you've just done the check now. Mm -hmm. um, would I need to do it again on the back end for the check? Do you do a double check? You know, yeah, because uh, it's not clear because it's it's they've got it both. Yeah, and I will tell you why it's necessary. It's for cybersecurity reasons. Uh, we are going a little bit off topic, but I love to do this anyways. This is my local server, my local computer. And literally, let me use a, an icon of a computer. Computer, this one. Super old, but it's, it's vintage. So this is my local computer. Local computer. This is my user, basically, into parentheses, uh, user. And this is our server. This is our server machine. I know that this is the database icon instead of the server icon. Please don't start and get picky. You know what I mean. Server. Uh, I just will say server. There you go. And we send our information. We don't need to do validation. If we know that or if we know that our uh, password field, uh, let's say the password field, password field is correct. Why we need to do a validation on the server? And the answer is security reason. The problem is you have your React code running in the web browser here, and this is your server. You, can, uh, you cannot control what is happening between. You are, if your user is using Wi-Fi and is using a, a old protocol like the WPA2, that even if the most common right now is easily hackable right now, a hacker can intercept your information, decrypt it, and modify the password field. And inside the password field, they can start running code. Remember that React allows you basically to, as soon as you put the, remember that as soon as you, uh, we put that, uh, you can run a function here. So if some hacker intercepts your Wi-Fi signal, it can modify the contents of your password field and do anything. So that's why you need to do validation brought in the front end and the server. You do the validation in the, in the front end to check that the user doesn't make a mistake of making a password too short or is missing the, the ad sign or something like that. And on the server is for security reasons. So, so we can guarantee that the information has not been tampered or being a okay. by a hacker. So that's why. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, no worries. So there are totally two different validations. It's not that, it's not that we're making duplication of code. No, it's for two totally different point of view. This is just if the user comply with our rules, and this is to see, can we really trust that the information has not been tampered? And the only reason to, to verify that the information has not been hacked is that they, they, it follows the same rules that we apply here. So this is a duplication main on purpose just for security. But you will see that in the next model in backend technologies, and you will love it. And if you're a front end developer like myself, you will fucking hate it. But <laughs> everybody has their own taste. But beautiful question, again, I really love this. So let's continue. We finished this exercise and we understand why we do this, uh, unfortunately, this old school. So even if we are using a cutting edge technologies around React, we cannot escape the legacy, the legacy, the legacy, the legacy 
And I told you that there is literally no way to escape this one because if the browsers uh, remove this function, all their web pages that take this one will crash because they will, this function will be called on the find. So for example, if I do this, for example, default, and I press my function, it's crashing because a preventive fault is undefined because we don't have this function. So if, we re if the browser remove this function entirely, the browsers across the planet, web pages across the page will start crashing because this function will be gone from doing something to being undefined. So this is something that you need to do forever. Unfortunately, forever in web development. In any case, we finish. Uh, this is the moment that we're gonna move to the to the React uh, to the React job to website. So I will just finish this one, so you can. Uh, this will be form, form. So you can start uh, working on the. So you can practice with this one in the afternoon. But it's the same articles that you have. It's the same codes that you have in the articles. I will delete this one, and we're gonna start creating the template code for. Uh, this is, will be. I will delete this one. Oh no, sorry, that's, that's re re reviews. I, I need this one as well. <laughs> sorry, this was supposed to be a red icon, so to signify that I don't delete. Okay, so this is the exercise, the hooks. I will send it to the, in the, at the end of the lecture. And we're gonna create a new project. And now it's gonna be the YouTube site. So let's get started. So let's create in the terminal, a new project, uh, ls, to see my directories, cd desktop. There you go. We're in the desktop. Remember, and I say remember because I really hope that we teach this in the SDA to create a folder, make dear. This is the shortcut to create a folder. And I will gonna say uh, YouTube site, YouTube site. And if I press LS, now I have a folder called YouTube site. Nice. But because I remember that I was gonna create a project with a create react app, I don't need to do that. <laughs> so I will delete the folder that I just created. There you go. And I will say MPX, create React app. And I will say YouTube. Uh, it was YouTube site, but you get the idea. In any case, as I show you, this project will be a small three web page so, uh, React site. So you will learn how to make multiple pages in React. It's not as simple as creating three, three index HTML page. In fact, that will not work at all. You are working on a single page application. That means that you actually behind the scenes, you only have one single HTML page, but React will simulate having multiple pages. So we're gonna learn how to make a three pages project, but today, today we're only gonna create the home screen because we don't know yet how to create multiple pages. So that we're gonna learn how to do that uh, tomorrow. And also tomorrow we're gonna learn how to install a uh, React comp external components, think about plugins that allows you to do wonderful things without needing to create everything from scratch. And as was mentioning to both Nicholas and Diana, uh, you don't need to think too hard about the validations of uh, forms. If you really need a high level security, uh, let's say that you're working an application for a bank or something that needs to take uh, care of credit cards or something, there is a React components that are already made for you uh, in what we call external libraries. In this case, there is one called Formic and there is another one that I don't remember the name, but Formic is, I think it's one of the, the most popular, one of the two most popular. So uh, you don't need to think about too hard about the validations because these libraries take care of the validation for you. So for example, you want to create a limit of the password, you just say a property uh, lim uh, min size equals six and it will be automatically validated that if the password is too short or too long and so on and so forth. So yeah, you don't need to think about too hard about that. But right now we're gonna create a homepage at least so we can start having something uh, prepared and thus we avoid tomorrow being a four hours lecture because we just make a little bit of progress today. So we are gonna create only the, only the homepage. Meanwhile, I will create it. I will open the, the project in my second computer, not gonna lie. Uh, uh, HTML takes time, the tags. So I will actually open the answers on the on my second monitor. But we're gonna go step by step in the in the monitor that you can see here. So I will create a new window, and this window will open the project, the finished project, and then I will move it to the other monitor. So just give me one second. Documents and dev 
uh, from a uh, module, uh, React articles. This is the ones that you see in the articles. This is the web page that, about the React theory, and this is the React tool. And this was, by the way, I will unlock it today. I also have a tutorial, but the tutorial is a little bit too old. So that being, that being said, if you read the tutorial and it has conflicting information with the with the articles and the in the in the in the React articles, take priority over the React articles. Why? Because these articles, these tutorials were written more than almost two years ago, so they are quite old. So take priorities over the articles. The articles were created less than two weeks ago, so they are fresh from the oven. So give a priority to those ones. But those these ones may have some information useful as well. So for example, you have another uh, tutorial. This is the site that we're going to create. Yeah, sorry. Where are those tutorials? Are they also in SDA? Yeah, I will. I will put. I will put them today. By the way. Oh, okay. Yeah, but as I told you, these ones are quite old. As you can see, it's basically the same information that we mentioned in the articles. But basically, in two articles, I'm trying to cram everything. So that's really a bad idea. That's why the new articles are are way are way better. And it's, in fact, I modify the order of the topics to make it easier. So. If you feel something that contradicts this article, and if this article becomes too hard, you can ignore it entirely. What? No. The articles become, but no, no what? <laughs> I think that, that your mic is open then. In any case, uh, if you feel this information contradicts uh, the project, uh, focus on the articles only. So in any case, I will move this one to a new window because we're gonna put it here. No, we open Did it. I talk by myself? Sometimes I do that. <laughs> I do it all the Sorry. time. Don't worry, that. Don't worry. It's totally okay. In any case, we are going to open this YouTube site, and we are going only going to do the basics. And by the way, don't expect that we're going to finish in twenty minutes. Uh, we're going to have a break and then continue. So, yeah, these classes are long. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry, to be honest. So okay, we know that we're going to delete the the CSS. We like to keep our projects uh, short and sweet. I don't say that the, uh, making not, not making tests is not important. It's just that we don't have time to cover stuff. So we're going to keep it simple and delete the test. But you need to learn a uh, test on your own. Remember, let me put in the chat. Yes, is the default testing library, testing library of React. I'm writing in the chat. Is the equivalent of JUnit in Java. So that will be something that you can learn after graduation, something like that. So in any case, we keep our components short. We call this one AppGSX. And because this project is gonna be quite long, we're gonna focus on organization today. Number one, as I mentioned, we're gonna need, a, we need to create pages and we are gonna have multiple components. And this, this project will be big enough to have components inside components inside components. Let me show you this one, what I meant in principle. So, so far we have created articles, uh, small pages. Uh, oh, you use uh, just improvement in that. Oh, perfect. Then you can apply your knowledge in that. Beautiful, thank you so much for clarifying this. So, uh, that removes me the, the guilty conscience of not teaching how to do unit testing, to be honest. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. In any case, so far we have created projects like this, GSX. Uh, and their app has a small uh, tax, something like this, uh, uh, button or title. But in this one, we're gonna go super in, in depth. We're gonna create a component and this component will have a component and this component will have a component and so on and so forth. So we're gonna go into the hierarchy chain quite depth and you can reach, uh, you can go crazy with the hierarchy. Let me show you, for example, something like uh, this. Uh, yeah, you can create a more nested uh, structures. This is the, oh, this is actually a video page. Oh, no, I found it by mistake. So you have uh, the main component, then you have your page components, and then you have port components and so on and so forth. Uh, as you can see, uh, yeah, I literally find the correct, the correct graphic. That's what, that was pure luck. As you can see, this is the homepage, the one that you saw at the beginning in YouTube, and this is the one when you actually see the video. You can see that the header, let me paint it in a, in a different color so it actually pops out a little bit different. Let me put this one in orange, well, in yellow. As you can see, this is the, your, your dream in the, in the Cupcake website. You can import the header 
in both pages. And if you change the design here, it will change here as well. So you don't need to copy and paste your tags. Uh, this is what makes React so modular, so amazing. So yeah, and the same with the footer and so on and so forth. So yeah, this is something that we are gonna create. Uh, trust me, you can go even deeper than that. You can go here and then here in the SDA platform, for example, in the SDA platform, let me show you the SDA platform. We have a component that is so complex that as soon as I write, I stopped finishing writing that component, I needed to write documentation. This is the this is the this is the hierarchy tree of this particular component in the SDA platform. So let me open this one as an admin. And the front end module. So for creating this page, that this is the page that has a table that allows me to uh, to add a new uh, study material for the to the platform. So this is my page. Uh, this will be the course editor uh, page. This is this. I will put it side by side. This, com this component has sections. They say session material. So these sections are the documents, the slides, the videos. Remember, the, the, the documents are usually blue, are always blue icons. These ones are all, all orange icons. These are always red icons. These are the purple ones that are used only in software engineering module. These are the coding exercises and so on and so forth. And these are the evaluation projects, the green ones. So we have a we have a, a an array of these elements. And because we this information is too complex, this in turn is divided into the table, the table that you can see here, and the form that you can see here. So this section from here to here is composed of a table the table that you can see on the top on the left. And then you have the form item here on the bottom. And then the form item itself has an input field and a select field. And also has a button, of course, a button. But the button is a normal tag, so I will paint it as gray. Uh, let me just move this one a little bit. So you can see how complex projects can grow quite easily. And I will paint this one, so it's a button. This is the button here that you can see. And this is the input field. And because this input field has a lot of variations, I even created it as a component. And because the same, the select field is a modified field, this one actually has icons. You can see, you cannot normally do that. I actually create a component just to create this logic and do the same thing. And then this is just a normal button. So this is nothing special. So that's why I deleted it. And then the table is so complex that actually the, each row is a React component. And then the, re, the, the, the row has the same input field with the same kind of validations because you can modify it. They look different. This one looks gray, it looks white. It's because we just modified the CSS. But behind the scenes, this component behaves exactly as this component with these icons. So that's why I can, I can reutilize components between these elements. Even if the row and the form look different, visually different, behind the scenes, they have the same brains as these elements and so on and so forth. So you can see that this page has, is quite complex. And don't worry, we're gonna go in depth in this one, particularly in the last day of React. But because we are running out of time, we just want to focus on project management a little bit on my project today. So let's go back. And we know that based on the chart that we saw, we need, a, we're gonna use multiple pages in this project and we're gonna have a multiple component. So I will be start being by I will start by be organized and I will create folders for everything that I need in this project. I need images for my thumbnails, so I will create a folder called assets. Even if I, I don't have anything right now, I will create a folder for my components. And we're gonna and let me just uh, see what are my components. Uh, this is something that we need to go to the diagram of this project. Let me open it. We need a header. I will paint it again in a different color uh, just to signify that this is repeated. So we need a header component and we need a card component. And then we're going to need uh, the video player itself. So uh, we're going to need components. So that's why I create a folder. But we also need the particular pages. The difference between a page and a component, to be honest, is the same. They are, com they are React components. But these ones are literally take the entire screen. So for example, this is my edit course uh, page. This is my home page. This is my uh, course editor page. This is my pre, uh, my course preview page. So let's take the entire screen. So, and they actually change the URL. So even if they are technically React components, 
I call them pages to signify that they, they have a, a, a different meaning. Uh, that's why. So, okay. We're gonna need a, a folder for pages. You can put your your page your your page components here as well because they are technically JSX, but we want to be organized. So smaller components like these ones, we put it in the folder components. And major navigation blocks of our website, we're gonna put it in a folder called pages. So it's okay. The difference uh, we understand the difference between a component and a page. If technically they are the same, they are both a. Uh, uh, page GSX with a GSX section. And this will be, uh, for example, a, a, a comp GSX. Even if they are the, file, the, the same file type, from an understanding point of view, for us, they are different things. Is that concept understood or did I need to explain it a little bit more? I want to hear yes or no. Can you explain, can you explain a little bit more? Yeah, no worries. So for example, you can see that this particular uh, button that has a picture and a title, this is a small component. I, I'm hovering the mouse. In fact, let me take a screenshot so we can put it in a sketch. Oh, let me open it in a sketch. Sketch. So yeah, we're in a sketch and uh, we see a little inception with the with a, a zoom bar, but in any case, uh, I think that this is big enough. You can read it. Uh, you don't need to read the text. You just need to focus on the elements that I'm gonna pass now. This element, I will put it with a red, with a blue, with a blue, and I will put it semi-transparent. Uh, this element on a list looks ugly. Let me just put it here, 25, and then add a big border so you can see the, the border. The border will be blue and super thick and maybe eight pixels. So, okay, this element, I actually can call it a name, is a car.gsx. This is my web page. We have this component. So this is my car component. And as you can see, these elements are cars as well with different content, but they are cars. So I will create a car. Let me just make it a little bit thinner so we can see that better. So this is a car and this is a car component as well. And this is a car component as well. What else can be a component in this project? Well, quite easily, the navigation bar is a component because we don't want to copy paste the, the, car, the, the, the component each time. Let me just create a, a graphic design style. This will be a React component. So I can say that this one has the React component style and beautiful. Now you can see that this is a component as well. So this is a this is the car. This is a car as well. Car, car, and this is a car. Uh, in fact, I can group these ones together. Let's play code here, and this will be my uh, cards array, just like the one that we created yesterday. There you go. So these are cards and this is another card as well. This doesn't need a group because it's alone, but this is my navigation bar, navigation bar.gsx because this is a, a React component. This is a simple H1 tag. This is a simple H2 tag. And this is also a simple H2 tag. So, so far so good, right? Where are we good that these are React components so far? Yes, no? I want to hear voices. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I will show you what else is no. a React. I will show you what else is a React component. The avatar. It's another React component. I know that we never finish it. Uh, that's on me. Uh, we're being a little bit busy, but this is a component as well. This is called the avatar. .gsx. So you can actually see that when I log in, I do have the picture uh, because the, the component is working. It's just that we never add the code for uploading pictures in the in the front end. So that's on me. <laughs> Sorry for that. Maybe next year. In any case, because this is part of the navigation bar, I will group it together and we'll call this one navigation bar. GSX. And uh, this is basically the um, to make more sense, these are these links are also called React components. You can see everything is React component. And to be honest, this is the correct approach. Uh, the more components you have, the better. I will put it here. 
So this is, for example, this is a this is a icon button, a button icon, a button icon, button icon dot gsx. Guess what, what? What is this component? Of course, it's a button icon as well, and this one as well, and this one as well. So you say button icon. There you go. There you go. And there you go. This is also button icon. As you can probably imagine, because I am a well organized person, crazy person, whatever you want to call it, this is called a links array. Because this is an array of my icons. And now this is just the navigation bar. This is the background. This is down promoted to be just a background. There you go. So you can see that my navigation bar is composed of my links arrays, my avatar. The SDA logo is not a component. What is not a component? Because it's simple, just an image tag. There you go. You don't need. But these ones are components because I can pass, I can pass the type, the label of the button and the icon from a single JSON file. So I can create these links arrays with a single JSON light, uh, uh, with a JSON, with a single JSON. I can create these ones, and I pass the label, the, the title that you can see, course, I can pass the icon, and most importantly, I can pass the link because as you can see, all of these ones open a new, a new tab. So for example, do you want to open a Slack? I want to open a Slack. And because I have admin powers, I can open the, uh, these elements. So as you can see, this is the, how our navigation bar is open. Uh, yes, Cosmin, go ahead. And I will still answer Marta's question, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Starting uh, the logo not being a component, but since we click on the logo and it moves us move us to the home page, it still doesn't uh, it doesn't be a component. Yeah, it's a component. But uh, my component has an if statement that if I pass a, a relative path, and I hope that you already know what is a relative path, you know the dot slash, it will navigate inside the web page. If it starts with a double with a HTTPS two points a slash a slash. It means there is an external website and will open it with a target blank. So yes, that's a special logic that I added to the system. Nothing that fancy. It's an if statement checking by the literally the, the the element. So yeah, did that answer the question? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, it's an if statement. If the if the link is if the link is is literally if link equal HTTP. It's an external link. Otherwise, else open inside the platform. Inside the platform. In, inside. Yeah. yeah. Of course, the complex is a little bit more logic, but it, it does a gist of it. In any case, let's continue. So you know that this is a component that has two components. So I hope that this answered the question Jester, that if components can have components, oh yes, components can have components. I will show you another component that will blow your mind. Just to be organized, I will say this car, uh, this is car. Teaching assistants, teaching assistant cards array. I know that the name is long. I don't use that name. I just use TAs. Oh yeah, let me use the real name. TA cards. And it's an array. I will put the word array so you can understand it, but I don't use the word array. I just say, I say TA cards. And even if this one is alone, it's actually created from a JSON file in the database. So this actually comes from a JSON file, even if it's just one, it's an array with one item. This is called admin cards. And I will put the word array so you can see it. And remember, this is perfectly valid. You can have an array with just one item. Makes no sense. But if as soon as I add another ad ad admin task, it will start making sense. In any case, this is our, this is our card, uh, array, uh, your cards, more cards. And this is a navigation bar that you can expand it. And there you go. I will tell you what is another thing is, an, uh, is a component. The whole page is a component. The whole page is a component. And this component is called page USX. And this page is basically everything inside this, this page USX, page dot GSX. And I will this I will then promote this one as a literally as a background. <laughs> So this is my entire, this is a component. Uh, sorry, let me just put this one outside. So this is a component. I, I, I move it, by the way, I move it on purpose. So you can see this is a component and this component has multiple elements and these elements are components. 
in turn, and they have more components, components over components over components. But just like, like I told, I teach you with the HTML uh, part of the course, we have semantics. And in this, com this component, this is a component. Legally, it's a component. That's why I'm painting it blue. But it's more than a component. For us, this is an entire page. So I will, even if it's just a React component that com is composed of more components, from, our log from a human point of view, this is not a component. This is a web page because it encompasses the entire screen. This is the entire web page, as you can see it. So that's why I like to call, sorry, in, sorry, instead of saying page, let's say uh, dash, uh, home screen, home screen, home GSX. So this component, instead of putting inside this folder and say home GSX, I like to this particular page move it here to this folder called page because from my logic point of view, as a human, as a, as, a, as a React code, I know that this one is a GX component, and this is also a React GXX component. From my, from my organization point of view, this component is super big, hyper special to the point that it deserves to have uh, his own folder. I hope that now the explanation is more clear. It is it or not, I can keep going further. Yes, I understand it now, thank you. Yeah, so that's why, in fact, I will actually go one more step. And instead in this one, instead of saying component style, I will create a new style. I will change its color from blue to something like a cyan or green. And I will change the, the border color to a darker green. And I will create a new style called a React page style. Because I consider these elements different, even if from the code point of view, and you will see that the code is the same, you are creating components. But the logic behind the scenes for us to organize our project, this is totally different. This is something much bigger than the sum of these parts. Uh, it's a, it's a, for us, it's a web page. So that's what is a different component. And that's something that we're gonna do. But for now, we are not gonna create that, this stuff. So we're gonna delete this component that I created by example. I will probably also need a folder for my CSS. So I will create one for the styles, perfect. And because in this example, we are not gonna connect to the database. So we don't connect information from the database. So for now, we are gonna just create a folder called data. And this data will have our information.json. Perfect. And the reason I created the file is because I will copy the files from here. And this is the file that we are gonna work with. The first thing that you see is that this, uh, oh, okay. I will, after the break, we're gonna take a 15 minutes break. We're gonna finish, I think before 12, don't worry. Uh, after the break, we're gonna see how to, how to lose the fear for this JSON because, oh, this is a big JSON file. If you don't have JSON experience, you're probably scared. And you see this like the matrix, this green colors looks like the matrix reloaded. reloaded. Uh, with the matrix screen, with this, uh, with these green colors and the one zeros, this crazy thing. So don't be scared. This is super easy to understand, and we're gonna explain it right after the break. So see you in 14 minutes. Uh, we're in the last stretch of today's class. Um, we are going to check how to understand this information. If you have JSON experience, I know that this is super easy to understand. But in case that you never uh, have dealt with a complex JSON before, this screen looks scary. And the best way to tackle the complexity is just to literally organize our project. So we can see that uh, this JSON is basically an array of similar looking components. But this component looks so weird. Eduardo, you're not sharing the screen. Oh, OK, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, let me show you. We were talking about this particular element, and you know that I was minimizing the elements. <laughs> so in any case, I was saying that this, uh, this JSON component uh, for a novice looks quite scary. So how to, do we lose the, 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 the fear of uh, tackling this kind of elements? It's quite simple. It's all about organizing the component, the component uh, or project. We can see that this is an array of similar looking uh, objects. 
how do we know that they are similar? Because you can take your time to read entirely, entirely this element and then this one, and then you can see that they are similar. But we can go one step further. We can copy one particular element. Yeah, let me copy this one and move to our spreadsheet program. You can use Google, uh, Google Spreadsheets, uh, Microsoft Excel, etc. I do like to use this one and I gave an optional lecture about that one. Uh, we can copy these elements and then we'll start playing, uh, playing around. We can say key to know what is the key and we can see that the keys are ID, category. We can say number to just discover how many they are. So we can say one, two, three. And then we can say title, we say description, description. I will not make each one of them because we are running out of time. Otherwise the lecture will become four hours, but you will start getting the idea. Once I do the key, I want, I want to do something that uh, JavaScript doesn't have, but Java does, data type. So data type. And I can see that the first one is a type number, a number. The second one are a string, a string, a string, a string, a string, a string. But sometimes you will see for something, for example, upload, upload date. So let me just put one, this upload date, I put number five. I will put in a string, but in this case, I want to use date. Even if I know that it's not technically a date, but sometimes in some projects when you work with a, with a code interview for a real test, you will get a, a weird format that is called a, the UTC format, I thought that you probably see it before, and you will get a value like this. If you get a value like this, like this one, let me copy it here. This means that you can convert this string back to a real uh, date component. So if you get, imagine that you get this value instead of this one that says October 2, then you will be able to, even if technically it's a string, you will be able to write uh, the date format something to consider by. Right now, we are gonna just delete it, but this is something that you can start discovering by doing this, uh, this kind of stuff. And then your uh, video URL, you can write a string, but you can also write a URL. So you can know that you can, sorry? No, never mind. I think that somebody was with the mute, uh, with the mic on. But in any case, you can see that this one, video, video, video URL is a, uh, Please mute the mics. Uh, video URL is a link. So even if it's a string, you can start by the, uh, putting URL to know, okay, it's a URL. So probably I need to start using a button. So even by or loading an image from the web. So just by starting to analyze the information, you can start uh, dominate the information that is in front of you and start being organize your project uh, ahead of schedule. For example, we can see that thumb says another way to die.jpg. So for example, thumb, even if it's a string, thumb is a string, I can put it in parentheses. This is an image or just a parentheses image. If you want to be more organized, you can say uh, use for, use for, and then you can say image, something like that. Uh, whatever whatever uh, format fancies you. But for now, let's keep it simple. It's a string and this will gonna be used for an image. And then we're gonna do example data because you are not working alone. You are creating this table. You totally understand what is this table about. Uh, so you, you don't need to do example data, but if you're working with your fellow developers, you probably need to communicate what, what is this kind of array. So we're gonna say example. So for example, one, two, three, but this, this one is kind of important. Category says music, hmm, interesting music. I can start putting, making a bullet point list music, hey, I say bullet point, bullet point, let's pull it, there you go, music. And let's start analyze what else we can do with them, uh, what other tags that we have. With the vehicles, oh, we can start discovering that, we can start organizing our information based on certain, certain information. We have uh, games and so on and so forth. So you can be prepared. And if you're coding in Java, Remember, you're gonna see the backend in Java. You can start making uh, enumerators or interface to be prepared for this kind of stuff. So you can see that now what is so important to create the example category. Titles can say another way to die, another way to die, to die, and so on and so forth. If you want to be go into depth and create super crazy mode, 
you can start painting your, your data types. For example, the strings you painted in green, uh, your endums in different colors, but keep it simple right now, keep it black, and so on and so forth. So yeah, now it's easier to understand. And yes, let me give, uh, give me a second in another monitor. I will open an, an example that I have right now. So I don't want to show it. I just want to see if I have missed something. And I, there is a particular reason that I cannot show this project. It's because it's for tomorrow's uh, case study. <laughs> That's why I cannot open it in this monitor. So just give me one second. Uh, I don't have it any, anyways in here in the, I don't have it here anyway. So yeah, but no, uh, I think that is pretty much uh, easy to understand that with this, if you take your time, I know that some, I know that you are developers and you have this weird rush that as soon as you get a, a project, the first thing things that happens in your mind is open Visual Studio Code and start making that like crazy. That's not how, that's, that's, that's not how a senior programmer codes. And a senior programmer code never starts going, ah, I need to code, code, code because I have a deadline three days. No. What separates a rookie developer from a senior developer is that if a senior developer gets a deadline from three days, he doesn't enter into panic mode. Oh no, I have three days, I need to code. No. First of all, he starts to organize his project. He starts to do this stuff. Once you reach a super mega hyper senior level, you can skip this table. But when you're just starting from a rookie to mid level and then to senior, this table actually saves a lot of time because you can start de detecting bugs right away. So, or something, for example, the, the, the example of the data I show you, right, uh, the, U, the UTC format. That means that you can use a library to parse that data and showcase the, the data in a nice format. Because for example, if you see the date like this, 2021, uh, uh, March is 3, 30. You can see that this is a, a, a universal format date and you can uh, then modify it and make it a, with a plugin. You can make it look a way prettier, but it's the same data that we just wrote. So that's why this is so important to take your time in that. Uh, trust me, it's not wasting time. It's investing time to avoid bugs or discovering features in the future. Because as you probably know, in the case of study from software engineering, the worst part is to discover a requirement that was missing a long time ago, and then you need to refactor your entire project to fit that. Uh, so we want to avoid that by making this kind of tables. So, okay, let's continue. I hope that you use this tip in the future. It can be used quite soon. You never know. In any case, I will uh, change the, the, the data. I have this here because I probably modified when I was matching the keyword. So I will, re oh no, I deleted, oh no, I actually deleted information that JSON. Don't worry, I have a backup copy here. Information that JSON, copy, and there you go. So I now have my data. Uh, remove files, files, and add the info JSON. In any case, we're gonna make the home screen of the Jutus website. So we are gonna need uh, both a header and a uh, border header and the cars. First of all, I don't need the logo. I don't need the CSS. First of all, I will do a sport default here. So I don't need this line of code. My first step will be to import the JSON. So import information from dot, dot slash. Oh, sorry, no, I went too far. From dot slash data slash information to JSON, perfect. And we know that it's important correctly, so I, I don't need to sit, skip time and do a console lock. So in any case, we have the information. And because information is not dynamic, I can import it outside the component. If there was a component that needs to be modified via props, then I will do it from inside using the require. So remember the difference. Now, inside my app, I will need a header. I will put a comment, comment slash, a header and the content with the cards, the content with cards. So perfect. We need the header bar and we need the content with cards. So let's create these components, shall we? We're gonna say header.gsx and car gsx. Car, what is the car? Uh, let me open YouTube real quickly. These elements are considered, uh, is a design element called cards. Uh, it's basically a thumbnail, a title, and some in extra information that you can click 
It's basically a button on asteroids because it has a picture, a title, and secondary and complementary information. And we're going to do the navigation bar. We skip this one. The project is, that will be too big for, for just three days of development in React. So we're going to focus only on the header and the cards. So let's create the header. Let's for default function uh, header. Header bar, header. Uh, don't get too complicated. And here we're going to need the logo. Okay, we can log, uh, get the logo. I will copy my assets folder right now. Uh, I will give you these files to you, to you tomorrow as well. Don't worry. Paste. Uh, I have all the images inside my asset folder. Remember, be organized. And I have all the thumbnails. I will gonna load it from the local computer instead of the, from the web. Uh, from the web, we're gonna learn that how to do that uh, to, uh, tomorrow uh, in a separate exercise. But in any case, we have the header. And in the header, I will just do two times and will not lie. I will just start copying information and return. And there is some text that we haven't seen yet. So I will not be able to copy paste entirely. This is semantic HTML. So we start with the header. And then we say, for example, the logo. Oh, we need a logo. Let's copy the logo. But no, we don't have this logo. This logo is going to crash the server because this is a variable that doesn't exist. No worries. We're going to copy it from here. So logo required assets, images, slash logo. And for now, hey, there is a variable here. Tomorrow we're going to say, uh, learn how to make some tricks. So for now, I will say logo, 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 logo. We have logo, uh, logo dark, uh, logo light. And tomorrow we're going to see how to make the dark team using React. It's super cool. Just, you can say, uh, change the, the, the color of the thing, the thing just by seeing a variable. So, but we're going to see that tomorrow with more time. Don't worry. I promise. So right now it's just a simple logo. Perfect. And we can actually import it from outside from the, with the import. But so far, I will keep it here. It works both ways anyways. Then we're going to have a, a dip for the search bar. Uh, search bar. And this, because it's a search bar, it's probably a, a refactor to refactor to form. Somebody did make a question. There is a tag that you can see, this is a component, uppercase. This is why it's so important. Use uppercase for component. This component link, we haven't created. This is a standard component. You will learn today in lectures where it's a standard component. And because it's a standard component that we haven't learned yet, I will delete it. I will just replace it with a normal uh, anchor tag. And we'll say that this will be an href to nowhere for now. Tomorrow we're gonna refactor that and make it go to a some when some page else. Yeah, go ahead, Nicolas. Um sorry, because you're doing the cons logo, don't you need to do the object thing as well? The sorry, oh, oh, okay. Amazing question. Thank you so much, Nicolas. Yes, I need to do the logo, and I will actually uh, uh, do the logo uh, logo uh, logo object and why I copy this one from the previous one uh, yeah thank you so much I forgot about that and logo uh, URL and this is equal logo object dot default why in my let me open the monitor in the in this one doesn't doesn't have it why doesn't have it because this is a previous version of uh, React and the Webpack and before that require gives you a before in, in a previous version of react and we can see that this this one says react 16 and then we can check another dependencies and so on and so forth there are older versions if we go to this one to our new one that we're creating here you can see react 17 but most importantly uh, behind the scenes there is another there's other libraries called uh, different versions of node version versions of uh, webpack and so on and so forth and the older version uh, this one uh, bring me directly the string in the new version is wrapped up inside the object. So in the old version, work it without the extra variable. That means that the older version was easier to use. So but fortunately in the new version that we're gonna use, we need to use this element. So thank you so much, Nicolas, for catching that mistake. Well, no mistake because technically in the old project was legal, but if you try to do that in the new React, it, was, it, it will break. So thank you so much for catching that one. So again, I will repeat, 
in the guide, you will see an old version. That's why I really, to be honest, I, I'm about to delete the guide anyways, because this is the information that I told you. Remember I was telling you about that? If you see information that contradicts the articles, focus on the articles. I think that I will delete the article, the, the guide here, because the, this guide is so old that will confuse you even more. So yes, I, 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 did, I decided to just not to release it today at all. We're gonna focus on the articles that we did today. Uh, we have them in the, in the platform. And this discovers something else about web development. Web development is super amazing, but web development moves so fast that in just one year, information can become updated totally. So welcome to web development. We go so fast that sometimes these problems happen. But let's go back to our contents. And thank you so much. That was a nice catch, really nice catch. So, so far we have our header, perfect. And that means that we need to do the style. Uh, because you did quite well with your CSS and you, and you didn't do well in your CSS, you will be able to recover. You will have an opportunity. And I already mentioned this on the last week. We are not going to explain the CSS. Our web page will have just CSS out of the blue and this will work perfectly. Or we hope so. <laughs> so we're going to import the header. So, and we're going to start using comments for this will be a project file, project file, my import. This is a project file. And we will import the header, import header, header from dot slash component. Please don't forget about the dot slash. You need to put it for real. Uh, components slash header. Perfect. And I will put it. Remember, this is a React component. So I put it like this. If we were an array of elements, I will just put the name directly as a in this format. Uh, but because this is the component, the React component in itself, I will put it like this. Let's test it out. I probably need to do MPS style. Um, and the you style. need to change the, the logo as well. Um, you didn't change it in the header. Sorry, Edward. No, no, don't worry. The image source? No, no, yeah, it's source. URL. Yeah, there you go. Thank yeah, you. There you go. Okay. Nice catch. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm so happy for that. I also, we need to import the style. Let me just go to my other project and let me see what was the parent tag. Uh, if I use load app, yes, I use app. And then, so, okay. It says I cannot resolve a index CSS. No worries about that. This is because in this file, we have a reference for the index CSX. I will just delete it. I will delete the web vitals because I'm not using it. And in fact, I delete it. So I keep it as simple as defined. And it says that in the header, we have a query that is not defined. You know what? We know that this is, uh, you will learn today about React hooks. So even if we are not gonna code it today, you know that this is a property and you know that this is an state. And it says that it's a constant. We're gonna use it tomorrow to use uh, to search, but right now we're gonna leave, leave the placeholder carry equal use state. You learn this, and the initial value will be empty because right now we don't know what to do. But we know that each time is is modified, it's updating itself. So far, so good. We know that. Perfect. Let's continue and let's see if the project is not broken. Okay, the CSS is definitely not working. We're gonna check that later, but we know that the header is important, the logo, and we have the search, and this one probably gonna be a button. Right now, it makes more sense to behave like a button, like a, like a, an our contact. So now this is a button, search, perfect. And you know that something will happen here, but that will be left for tomorrow. So we know that we're importing the header, but now the most important part before the tutorial ends is that we need to create the cards. So let's create a card so we can use this information to create an array of cards. So let's create our card component. Let's port default. Export default function. There you go. And it's called card. There you go. Perfect. And this card, let me open the component here outside the screen. Oh, this card is super complex. So let's do it. Return. This will be an article tag. An article tag. It will have a class name. Class name, car. Uh, oh, I made a mistake in my in my previous exercise. I put car uppercase. Please use lowercase. I will refactor the CSS. And I think that I was missing the the class name here as well. Yeah, class name header. I use class name. Class name. 
uh, header and, and it's uppercase. Uh, please start using lowercase for the CSS. This is horrible. Um, no, it still doesn't it doesn't get the color, but well, it's okay. Ah, it's because I haven't exported the, the, the style. So import style. Remember, we only import a style. And we put the CSS in folders because we are organized. Uh, import, remember that you don't need to import uh, as, a, as a variable, it's just the entire information. Style slash style, sorry. Oh, we have two folders. Huh, weird. This one is style slash, uh, we call this one styles, plural. Styles slash style.css. And let me see if we have some design elements. It's reloading the page. Beautiful, now our reactive uh, has a nice design. This button is another tag. I will change it tomorrow, no worries. So, so far our header component looks beautiful and it's probably gonna work on mobile as well. But I don't want to test my luck yet. I don't want to fail my own project. <laughs> so we have a card component and uh, let's continue. Our card component will have an image. So we have an image. Right now we don't have this information. So for now we're gonna leave it empty. No, we're gonna put it there and then of course it will crash. And let me just copy the rest of the information. Perfect. But let's see what is happening. It says video thumb, and this is an image. And so this image is, you probably already remember the trick for the required trick, but okay, now let me delete everything. So you can just start working and let's work our way around in the, Pro, because I don't want to cheat and I don't want to cheat and just your information appear from nowhere. So we're gonna delete everything. So this is a this is the HTML the the structure the GSX structure. Sorry, but remember this basically is HTML so far. So remember our dear component. We have information from the category. Let's open the the YouTube card the real YouTube website and to analyze the, what the card needs in order to work. So we have this one from the Godzilla team. Perfect, let's focus on this one. <laughs> we have the thumbnail. You also have the time, but I think that I didn't put the time in the example. So don't, don't, don't overcomplicate it. So we have, the, we have the image, the thumbnail, the thumbnail of the video. We have another picture, thumbnail. This is one from the channel itself. The channel is called Gigafan. Yes, you can see the name here, Gigafan 997. Then you have the title of the video that is called the Godzilla March. Then you have the name of the channel, Gigafan again. And then you have the views and how old is it? But for now, in this example, we're gonna keep it basic. We're gonna only have the thumbnail, the channel thumbnail, the title, the channel name, and pretty much it. I think that we don't have any more information in our JSON or exercise. So we're gonna work with that simple information of data. So, okay, we need to send that information. So we need to receive a prop called information. Perfect. So that was the information that you saw here. And that information was the, the one that had the title. Now I can, now that I mentioned this information and this information, where it come from? Remember, it comes from this information. So to each card, each time that I will create, I will create a card array. You know that, and so I don't need to make a graphic for that. We're gonna create a card array and to each item of this array, I will pass this particular object. And we already analyzed this object. We know that how do we, how we can understand this object is by creating this beautiful table. And we're gonna pass all this information. And based on this information, we'll be able to create uh, our contents. So now I will be able to copy this information once again. I will create, copy everything here here, a copy. I will delete this link tag because right now we don't have it. I will read, link is similar to the anchor tag. So I will change this one, uh, a tag. And I will just put href here. I will change this to href. Tomorrow we're gonna refactor it. And you can see that this is information ID. Remember information ID. And each time that you see a, a description is offered from a JSON, also for the JSON, also for the JSON, also for the JSON. So far, so good. And this video thumb came from, remember, and we're gonna do the, 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 the comment that, uh, that Nicholas said, properties, we, because this came from a 
bring all project. This is going to be a video thumb object. In term object. Because remember, in mod in modern React, in a modern version of React, this will return an object instead of the directly the URL. So we need to refactor this project and say video thumb uh, URL equals video thumb object, video thumb object dot default. And the same thing with channel thumb URL equal channel thumb object dot default. Uh, why is giving me, because I didn't write constant correctly. There you go. And I will change this one for video thumb URL, perfect. And the second one is around here for the, remember this is the, this is the thumb, the, the, the big video thumbnail. And this is the, the smaller channel one and the channel title and the channel name, the video, the video name, sorry. This is the video name. This is the video channel and this is the video views and so on and so forth. So we're gonna see that in a moment. So this component is ready to be used. Let's import it. So let's create import, sorry, import car from dot slash component slash car. Beautiful. If we put the card here, we can test it out. We can say car, and we're gonna say the prop information. And the information that we're gonna send, we're gonna pass a variable. Sorry, there you go. We're gonna pass a variable, and just to debug, we're gonna pass information dot zero just to see if it's working. And by zero, remember, I'm passing the the very first item in this particular array, just to see if it works. The CSS is a disaster, but you can see that it's working. If I put it here and I clone my component, and I put component and I pass the first, the second element of the array, you can see that immediately react, reacts, pardon the pun, and it creates more components on the fly. So we need to fix number one, we need to fix this one because it looks ugly. And why it looks ugly? Simple, because we know that we are good developers and we know that we cannot put our cars just floating around. We probably know that we need to organize our code. And if we want to use a grid, we probably need to use a section, right? So let's wrap it up, this one, in a container. So let's do that. So let's create this one, uh, deep. And we put this one as a container, class container, class, class name, container. And because we can use better names, uh, we can call this one as well, uh, you know, uh, we can call this one grid. And I will refactor this one uh, during the afternoon and we call this one grid because for me, container is too generic. This is a grid because we are gonna use CSS grid. And we're gonna need to call this one a homepage, homepage because this represents our homepage. Oh, now, beautiful. Now it has actually, we added the, And it still doesn't work. I will check why it doesn't have the recommended section class name. Ah, okay. Now I see. This is called a container. This is a div. Uh, inside this one, I will say, I will put a, a title. I say, I will put a title, h1. And this title will be called a uh, recommended, recommended videos. That is something that if I go back to my original YouTube web, the original website of YouTube, I think that this title exists. Or it used to exist, and before one redesigned, it was here said recommended videos. If you open, for example, uh, in, in at least in my Samsung Smart TV, it says recommended video right here. So that's why I put in this title like this. And inside here, I will create another div. And this one will be, be called class name grid. And this is probably a semantic element. Remember, this is a section, so refactoring. Oh, beautiful, now it works and now it has a beautiful cars. So we're about to finish. We just need to, instead of doing this uh, cruel approach, we're gonna pass an array of cars. So we're gonna say cars array. Remember, we are learning purposes. I, I use in the, core, the car array here, the word array, but in my real code, I just do cars because I understand that plural each time that you have a variable that is a plural, it's an array. 
but because we are learning, I will say cards array, but get used to just here, uh, reading the word cards. And we're gonna create that. So let's create this, uh, these components, components. I wanna say I create cons, cards array. Remember just cards. Remember that it's a, fun, it's a math function. And where do we get the information? We get information from this JSON. Information dot map. I will go faster because at this point you need to be comfortable with arrow functions. And I will say arrow function. And my arrow function will return for, oh, sorry, for each item inside my, remember, for each item. And by items, I mean each elements on this array. For, for each item, I will pass my card component. Remember, you need to pass a key. A key is like is a, is like an ID, so React can understand how many elements are being controlled, and you need to do that because React needs to keep track when he creates this when he creates the state. He needs to remember how many cards Eduardo did create in the project. Oh, he created eight cards. So when I reconstruct the project, I also need to put eight cards. And I also need to remember in which order we want to create the cards. So that's why he, uh, React needs the key parameter. And in the parameter key, I will, pay, I will pass key.id. And I will pass my information. I can pass title and then, and I can say then info, uh, info, uh, item.title, title. And then I can pass the thumbnail, thumbnail, equal item dot thumbnail. But I, re I, I gave you a tip yesterday. If you need to pass multiple uh, props to the point that it will be like a 20 props, just pass the entire item and says information equal item, pass everything. And inside my, inside my components, I will pass this information. So- uh, Quick question about the key. Yeah. Does it need to be named key or can it just be any other word? No, it has to be key because as you can see, if I pass a mouse, it says GSX attribute. Remember, I don't create a React. Uh, this is a, it's an element of a React attribute key, React key. So this is a this is a property from the components that. Let's go back to Java. Remember that in Java, your classes extend another class and another class and another class and so on and so forth. So far, we are okay with that in Java, right? Or classes super uh, extend from another class from another class or React components stand from React component. And each React component has this property called key. So that's why we create the key. It's not because I'm, I'm, I'm crazy and I don't want to use ID. No, it's because ID doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. But if I put key, I get the documentation from React. Because remember, my components, let me go here. My components are React components and React components extend from React and React, as you know, React has now this property called key. So that's why it's key because React has this key, this property that's come from the React documentation. That's why. But in any case, we have it and now we can create our color array. And if everything goes well, beautiful, it works. And uh, let's see if we can pass the test of uh, having a, a mobile website, enter responsive mode. It works quite well. Nice. This project will get a B because this icon is not aligned. But it will pass the validation because you know that you have a in mobile with one column. But if I extend my space, it becomes two columns. This is a stylistic choice. You know who, are, who it is, by the way. Uh, and when we have more space, we start adding padding. And when we have more space, we are more columns. And so and so forth. And when we were running out of our space, we say, hey, do the, don't make the, the items go to the screen of the screen. Put a limit on how much uh, wide they become because otherwise it will be super horrible. Imagine the monitor that one of the hours has that is ultra wide. Imagine that you have icons from here, from here, it will be a mess to use the mouse. So put content in the center and put a limit. So yeah, uh, we finished for today. No, but let's do one more thing before we, we finish for today. Let's do one more thing. Number one, oh, I forgot to do my commit. Well, my commit will be number one, added image files, files. Two, create the, the page, home, the, the page home. Three, uh, let me just put these ones with lines. 
uh, enter, create a page home, free, create the header, create the, the header and car components. And number four, add the style, the CSS. So this is my commit, there you go. So let's do one more thing before we finish for today. As you can see right now, uh, let me exit the responsive mode. As you can see, we have our page. But remember that we're gonna work on a project that is a three page project. We're gonna have the video player page. We're gonna have the search results page. Yeah, search results page and the homepage that we're doing right now. So let's be organized and let's do one more step before we finish for today. Let's refactor all of this and put it inside a one component. So let's put everything here inside a component. So let's do that, shall we? And that component shall be named home. And we're gonna create a sport default for function home. home page. There you go. And we are gonna copy all these elements, including this HTML CSS tag. And we're putting it here. Oh, sorry, sorry, return. And inside the parentheses, there you go. Oh, just give me one second. Oh, okay. This is a nice mistake and it's super good that we actually made a mistake here. You can only have one parent tag inside your React component. This complaint is that uh, we are trying, you are trying to have, a, you can see GSX expression. You must, have, you must have one parent element. We are trying to have one, uh, one section here and one header here. So we're trying to return two components at the same time. You cannot do that in React. So that was nice that we did a mistake. And what is the solution? Quite simple, wrap it up, deep, close deep, and wrap it up everything. So now we are returning one element, deep. And this deep has a header and a section. And this deep has a class name. It was called homepage. There you go. And we know that we are good students and we know that CSS use lowercase convention. So we wanna refactor this later someday, probably never. And this is gonna be called home homepage. Uh, let's move it here. And we're gonna, we don't need the header anymore. And we're gonna import, import home from dot slash. And because we know, and we explained it before the break, that even if this is a React component, you can see this is a React component. It is a React component. But for us as a human being in our context, in our particular situation, this behaves like a web page. So we're gonna call it as a page, home. There you go, home page, home. There you go, home. And we import this component here, home. There you go. And the project will crash, of course. Now let's debug it, shall we? I cannot find home. Okay, I cannot find home. Let's fix this one. It's pages. Plural, first mistake. Inside home, we have a problem. It says the header and cars array are not defined. So let's fix this. Because if we go to home, we are using this component here, but we never instantiate it. So let's fix it. Let's go here in home. Let's import the header. Let's do it. Project files. This is project files as well. Project files, plural, project files here. Let's use the name. And remember, import. And remember that our page is here and our component header is here. So we need to go two folders up. So dot, dot, double dot, slash. And I go one level up. Components slash header. Wonderful. Now it's working. Uh, it says the header is still not defined. Hey, this is, uh, oh, I went a mistake. It's header from, there you go. Problem number two, cards are race is not defined. We know that this is an array of cards. Oh, that means that we need to copy this code here. Cut it from here and put it for here. So I can reload the page. It says information is not defined. Okay, we need to move information as well. And you probably know that we need to move card as well. So I will put this one here. And one of these elements will break on, uh, will break on purpose, reload. 
I cannot resolve components card. Can somebody tell me why component card doesn't work? It should have uh, double dots. Yes, that's the answer. And why? Uh, it is outside, I mean, it's component inside component. Correct. This is not in, in the home. The home, let's all see this one. Thank you so much. That's the correct answer. When we are here, we use one dot to go inside these folders. But because home is inside page, and you can literally see that as soon as I open the component home, the Visual Studio opens the folder for me. I need to go one level up. So I need to go to the folder one level up to enter components. So that's why I need to use the double dot notation. Please research if you don't feel comfortable with relative paths. And this is something that you probably need to have learned by Programming Foundation, but you haven't research about relative paths and read about it because this is more close to the terminal to than React. This doesn't, doesn't have to do anything with React. This is all about just how to navigate the command line. So please research about that if you don't feel comfortable with this because I detected some projects having this problem yesterday. In any case, let's continue. Thank you for the suggestion. And inside that I cannot find data. Well, I will not make the question. It's the exact same, the same problem. And there you go. We have the home page here and our up home page loads this one. Tomorrow, we're gonna learn how to put uh, the second page here. Uh, this will crash, of course. And this will be video, video page. And this will be the search search results page. Result, result page. And we can create a profile page. Of course, this will crash because they're gonna find it. But tomorrow, we're gonna learn how to put these elements and how do we can switch between these elements based on the uh, ULL. And not only that, because you have the articles, you will be able to learn about that on your own by reading the articles. So this is all for today. Thank you so much. I will take questions, but you can literally go. I will not teach new concepts. So if you want to go for lunch, go for lunch. I will send this project right away. I will stop sharing the screen. Uh, so you can go, I will read the chat. You want to make questions, go ahead. You want to go, go. So I will just stay for one second reading the chat. Make questions if you want. He must have changed the help. Maybe patient issue must change. Yeah, pads, 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 pads. Remember, pads. Uh, we can wrap it up. Yeah, uh, Olga says that we can also wrap it up with the empty tags. I will share the screen. Uh, if I open Visual Studio Code, uh, for the ones that are still here, I will open the project. In my home page, instead of wrapping it up between the div tag, I can wrap it up like this. I, and like this, sorry. Uh, yes, the computer is slow, there you go. I can wrap it up like this. But what is the problem with this approach? The problem with this approach is that I cannot add a class. And if I want to add a class to, to stylize something that only happens in this page, I need my class name. So that's why I didn't use that approach. But it's valid, but that's why I prefer to use this approach that wrap around my page inside a div so I can literally use uh, the tag. Because as you see that if I, I remove this one, this one becomes an error. And the error is because I cannot add a tag to an invisible, this is called an, a, a React fragment that basically is an invisible component that doesn't exist. Uh, the contents are copied directly to the next, to the parent. But as you can see, it's not worth it for my particular case. Uh, but yes, it can be done. Uh, and yes, it's empty, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you just read about the React samples and yeah. Okay, that will be it for today because I don't, I don't hear questions. So thank you so much and see you tomorrow. By the way, there is an optional lecture for today called uh, Optional Technologies. In the recommended spreadsheet, there is a couple of videos that you can need to watch to be prepared. And just one final note, bring popcorn because oh boy, this is the best lecture of the SDA. So see you. Sorry, sorry Eduardo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah the, the, the CSS did you did you code the CS for the CSS for this uh home page of the no and I tell you because I told you last week that in this week in the second week in React we're only gonna skip HTML and CSS because we need to go faster because if I start to write the entire CSS code for the React website it will take me at least two one or two days to do it 
Uh, we all not have that time. So uh, the CSS, I, I told you, uh, that the, I told everybody, not, not you, 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 but you, the group, that I was literally about to copy the CSS. And this is something that you should do at this particular point in time. You should be comfortable writing CSS to replicate this particular effect. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So we know more questions. See you tomorrow and see you in the optional option. Hi, Eduardo. Thank you so much for you. But I would like to tell you something, you know. Yeah. Uh, one hour, uh, I, I have not been with you because I was made, I made interview with the Moody's company. Regarding, Amazing. But you have a the lecture recorded. In development, mm -hmm. they focus upon the teacher about that way I ask you why, why you go to the Java, not to go to the C-Sharp. This is my question. Ah, why I do examples with Java instead of C-Sharp? Yeah, because now I made interview. They told me about .NET, about uh, what the meaning, uh, OpenShift, about C-Sharp. Mr. Eduardo, what should I do? <laughs> Good question. You should tell nobody. I need you to help not for me, to help all, you know. My... Yeah, you should tell nobody that programming foundation should be probably decided that nobody should decide. Uh, wait, Paul, give me a second. <laughs>